What's going on, everybody? This is week three, I believe, of me doing Malpar's dev logs. Um, they're going to come every week, provided there's actually something to talk about. Obviously, this week there is. Um, it's been a long week, and we're going to get into the progress that I've made on development. But first, a couple of kind of house cleaning things. If you don't know anything about Malpar's, go back and watch probably the first devlog or the second one. I go a little bit more in depth in the second one than I will here. Um, but I will kind of talk a little bit about what it is um, for people who are just kind of popping in for the first time. So Malparse is my cybersecurity SaaS startup thing that I'm building. I don't really know exactly what the correct terminology for that is. Um, but essentially the idea of it is normally you've got malware samples. As a security researcher, that's like your bread and butter. You're trying to reverse engineer samples and find out more about how the malware works and what it's used for. The problem is, is a lot of these samples have embedded resources. You've got config files, you've got, um, if, you, if you're dealing with ransomware, then you've got Bitcoin addresses, you've got strings that are you know, found within the malware, things like that. Um, the goal of Malparse is essentially to pull all of those different attributes out of a piece of malware and to be able to pivot on them. What pivoting means is basically if malware sample A and malware sample B both have the same configuration file, I would like to be able to see that. Essentially, I can pull out the configuration file from malware sample A and find malware sample B because it also has the same configuration file. I want to be able to do the same with strings. I want to be able to do the same with embedded DLLs, things like that. So if you want to find out more about the, 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 the development of Malpars, you can go to malpars.com and sign up for the weekly newsletter. Those of you who have Kind of visited the site before you'll notice it looks a little bit different so let's get right into that so i kind of realized that the quality of the landing page that i had before was absolute trash and not only was it trash it was leading to abysmal conversion rates basically i've had about 250 different people visit the site over the last month and i think i've only got 10 people on the newsletter right now that's a conversion rate of like roughly 4%, which is pretty bad. Luckily, I don't have that much traffic, so I'm not, I'm not like missing out on just a ton of different people that could sign up for the newsletter. But still, that's pretty rough, and I wanted to kind of do better. I also wanted a better face to the project that I'm putting all of this work into. So over the last week, I worked on basically a reskinning of the site. I did up the design. I did away with, there was like a scrolling... Um, image box thing that kind of explained what Malparse is and what it does. I got rid of that and instead opted for some text next to those images that kind of explains a little bit more about what Malparse does and it was a little bit more markety. So it's going to kind of, I guess, be a little bit more illuminating to people what exactly the project is all about. Um, so I'm hoping that that's going to up the conversion rate and kind of help me uh, build that mailing list a little bit more so that more people can follow the development journey. Um, aside from that, like I said last week, mainly working on the test um, framework for Malpars. The whole idea behind that is basically I've got several thousand malware samples on my home PC right now, which is normally a bad thing. Um, but in this case, I'm collecting malware samples, and what I want to do is break them up into batches. So I'm using MongoDB right now as kind of the back end for basically everything. And the idea is to break up these several thousand malware samples into smaller batches and put those batches within a MongoDB collection. And then have another MongoDB collection basically have rows that correspond to test runs. So I wanna, what I want to be able to do is run my parsing library across a ton of samples at once and test to see how fast it is, whether or not it actually works, what kind of errors were run, and then compare that over time. So if the first iteration of Malparse runs super slow, I want to be able to show, hey, this has gotten faster because I implemented like this kind of faster algorithm or a faster way to parse through the files. Um, so it's also going to show me weak points. So if I've got one batch file or one batch that's just full of like .NET DLLs or, or .NET files, then the parser doesn't deal with those very well, then I know, okay, I need to fix my, you know, .NET parser. If I've got a bunch of ELF files for Linux that aren't parsing correctly or that are parsing 
incorrectly in a very specific way that I know I need to fix my ELF parser. So it's going to kind of tell me where I need to work on. It's actually incredibly important and I go a little bit more in detail about why it's incredibly important and how I'm building it out in the last video. So I'll link to that wherever, one of the corners. So what have I gotten done so far? I've broken up um, the files into a lot of different batches. I've done a little bit on the back end for the testing um, framework. Um, right now, I'm actually kind of having to take a step back and abstract a little bit and basically rethink how I'm dealing with the actual code itself. Basically, I missed a perfect chance to build a hierarchy of classes where I have one catch-all file class that gets something that should be common to all files. So things like MD5, SHA-256, SHA-1 hashes. Those are going to be in every file. It doesn't matter what you know file type it is. It doesn't matter if it's an ELF or a script file or anything like that. They're all going to be hashable. So that should be in some parent's larger class that's a catch-all. If it's not an ELF, if it's not a portable executable, if it's not a DLL, it will at least have those hashes. It should also have file size, file length, um, you know, things like that. So that should be common across all files. So if you've written code a lot or if you've kind of dealt with inheritance and things like this, this should be like a just red flag that you need to be doing things with inheritance. Basically, the idea of it is I need to have a catch-all file class and a bunch of parsers that correspond to specific file types. So PEs, ELF, DLLs, .NET, things like that, um, that basically have more like file type specific stuff. So ELF has different headers and different sections. PEs have different headers and different sections, but they all should basically inherit from that file class. That's going to lead to cleaner code and hopefully a little bit faster code. Um, so I'm going to kind of rethink how I'm doing that and restructure that this week. Um, but I do have the testing framework finished. Um, I'm able to batch things out right now. And the next step is going to be actually running those tests. So making sure that the file parsers are all kind of built in a way that lends well to testing at scale. Um, you know, I don't want to overfit it to where it works really, really well for the test framework, but not really, really well in prod. Um, so there's going to kind of be a fine balance there that I need to make sure that I'm meeting. So that's going to be essentially the entire next week. Now that I'm not doing a bunch of design stuff, because honestly that took like three or four days straight work, um, just because I'm horrible at design and I had to tinker with CSS a lot. Um, but basically the idea of it now going forward is just all on the test framework making sure that I can actually run tests and then actually running those at scale. And by next week, so a week from the day today, which would be the 25th, I should actually be able to show you what that test dashboard framework thing looks like. And I'll actually run some tests, show some data, things like that. As far as I know, that's about it. I've basically got the revamped site design done. There are a couple of basically like temp links there. So for the blog, um, I think the contact page, and there's like one other on the site. Let me navigate to it. So I've got a couple of temp links at the top about blog and change log. Eventually there's going to be a change log once there's actually something to log the changes for. Um, as of right now, there isn't. There's also going to be a blog and an about page. Uh, the about page actually just scrolls down to all of the about information that I've got on the page. Um, but eventually there will be a blog and things like that as well. And obviously, there's going to be an app at some point once I actually get to something that's, you know, finish worthy. So business and stats and marketing and stuff like that. Um, so the, the numbers are going to look really impressive and really weird. Um, I'm going to show my Fathom analytics dashboard up on the screen here. Um, basically what happened was I forgot that I include the script source in my code and that basically tells Fathom that somebody is visiting your site. So while I was testing my site and changing all of the um, CSS and fun stuff like that, basically it logged every single time that you know I visited the site or created a new version of the site that I was visiting the site instead of just messing with it on my local system. So it's going to show that there are 572 views on um, Malparse over the last week. That's not the case, obviously. That would be great, but that's not the case. 
Um, there were significantly less than that. I can't tell you how many because of that problem. I'm going to fix that obviously today. Um, but that, that kind of gave me a nice surprise and then a you know sad realization that I, you know it wasn't going that well. Um, there have been 45 unique visitors on the site um, over the last week, so that's cool. Um, zero conversion <laughs> to um, the newsletter, um, which sucks, but hopefully the new design is going to fix that. Um, like I said, the new the the newsletter goes out every single week. It's basically a much more verbose and in-depth text version of this. And obviously I'll give updates. And once there's an actual app on system, you're going to get a, a an early bird discount. Basically, if you've been following this for a while and you're a part of the newsletter, then I'm going to give a discount for the service. So if it's something that you could see yourself actually using, it's worth signing up for the newsletter, even if you're just going to ignore it every week. Um, so still stuck at 10 members on the newsletter. It's whatever, you know, I'm trying to do a little bit better on the design and stuff like that, but not too much you can do there. Um, I'm not a great marketer. Um, I'm working on the blog. I am thinking about just doing something simple like on Webflow or something like that and basically doing a redirect over to the Webflow blog from the Malparse page. Not entirely sure if I'm gonna do that or not. We'll just kind of see, but I basically really want there to be a blog so that there are backlinks to the site and that's going to help with SEO and stuff like that. Um, so that's where we're at with marketing. The spend um, and profit and loss is exactly the same. I will look back at my last newsletter, negative uh, $51.53 per month. So no revenue right now and the spending is on um, Fathom Analytics, which is 14 a month, domain registration, which is $2.33, basically parsed across an entire year, and the hosting, which is about $35, $35.20, something like that. Um, so that's where all the costs are coming from, no revenue, obviously, since I don't have a payment page or anything like that, a way for you to donate. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Uh, the next week is just going to be some really fun testing framework development, um, and no more design. Thank God. Thank you guys so much for supporting both Malparse and the series on YouTube. It's been awesome to see and take it easy.